This is the ARV, and I'm going to give you a tour and talk about some of the features. On the back here, you can see we've got a propeller on each side. So this is fully amphibious, laser distance sensor, which is for reversing. We've got some lights in the back here for brake and reversing lights. Little ARV logo up the top. On the side, you'll find this little button here. This button just gives you access to the clutches. So the left clutch controls the wheels and the right clutch controls the propellers. If anything breaks, this is where you can come and repair those. There's also a light in here so you can work on it at night. Terra is how you say the first part of my username. Access ladders on the sides. There's a ladder on each side. ARV logo. And up the front, we have the fuel flap. And the fuel gauge. This uses diesel. Around the front, we've got a hood latch. Lights inside. There's no handles in here, so jumping up is a little bit of a mission, but there wasn't much space to put them. You can get in there if you give it a big run jump. Up here, we've got two 3X radiators. This buzzer is the horn. Medium battery. Two gearboxes come into the generator, so this is what's giving you electricity. The cooling system uses an impeller down the back and then a belt pump on the front as well. In behind here, we've got some controls for the winch. So this winch signal flip switch will send an on signal over any electrical cables that are connected to the winch. Above that, there's the winch length and then winch in and winch out. And the rope is just attached to one of the rope anchors on the front so that it's always here ready to go. And hidden here on the left side of the winch, there's an electrical cable anchor, so you can recharge if you have to. This logo here is inspired and sort of copied from Metal Gear Solid 4 Dribbin logo. It doesn't have all the other details around it or say Dribbin, but this vehicle is inspired by Dribbin Striker from Metal Gear Solid 4, so I thought I'd include that. And then back at the back, we push this button. The door rotates down. It actually rotates twice. There's a hard point down here. You can kind of see this block that's not really connected. So when the vehicle spawns, the store is closed and the hard point is down. And then the hard point rotates up and the door opens and then the door closes. That's how I've got a robotic pivot that can rotate more than 90 degrees and be a sealed door. When you first come in, on the left here we've got the door button and the interior lights button. The interior lights first mode is white, the second mode push it again it's red, and then it will go off for the third mode. And that just cycles through. On the interior, we've got six passenger seats on the left, and then all the equipment you'd need. Flares and glow sticks are at the back, then welders and flashlight and binoculars, the things that I'm always losing down here at the start got flare gun ammo and the flare gun and then a separator that separates the diving equipment and the spear gun and the, and the spear gun ammo. Just above that we've got a bilge pump. This is a manual bilge pump so if you've lost electricity to everything for some reason and you're taking on water you can use this to get rid of some of the water inside. This gauge here shows the amount of water inside. The dial next to it is the air supply so behind these seats there are two gas tanks and they will resupply with air whenever you're driving. The vehicle spawns with oxygen in the tanks behind there, so the diving gear will fill up a lot quicker for the first couple times that you refill it. If you've been out on a long expedition and you used up all the oxygen, it'll just be replaced with air. It still works, it's just a bit slower. On the right hand side, I've got a hose and a cable and a fire extinguisher and the medical bed, six first aid kits and the defibrillator. An automatic heater which will turn on when the temperature outside is 10 degrees and then three SMGs each with two ammo magazines and above that we've got the hatch and the ladder that leads outside onto the roof up here we've got two flare pods one on each side so eight flares in total there are illumination flares the two radio antennas, they are send and receive voice communication radios and then the radio antenna on the front is for changing the train track signals. These two hatches here are basically just emergency escape hatches, but you can stand on the bed here 
and see out this one. So if you wanted to take up a position here and shoot, you can do that. In the middle, just outside of the hatch, is the spear ammo for the machine gun. The machine gun. And then the driver's turnout hatch up the front. You can just open this whenever it's on a system. So there's a contact sensor here and there's an end effector hidden under this piece. So if it's open, the contact sensor goes in and the system knows it's open. So when you turn out, it won't bother trying to open it. So yeah, it just knows, it knows which position it's in. Back inside, come forward to the driver's and gunner's position. There's obviously a bed on the left here for sleeping. So if you're doing career, you can just skip through time. I've got a fishing rod down here and then some empty equipment slots for anything that you need to store, anything you feel like stealing. There's also some empty slots down below the seats for stolen items and two ropes. First we've got the gunner's seat here. Directly above it is the microphone and the speaker for the radio system. And the key on the left here turns all the gunner's uh, displays and instruments on. The gun is controlled with WASP. If we press the C button up in the top left, the color will change and it just cycles through five different colors. So you can see black's quite hard to see. White's okay, but a little bit hard to see with the clouds. Green, blue, and yellow. So you can just pick whatever color is more suitable. In the middle, we've got the heading that the turret is facing and compass degrees. And then the degrees next to it is the elevation of the turret. So it can go down to negative nine and up to 54. And then we've got the sight system in the middle here. The left side of it where these dashes are will turn on when the laser is turned on. So currently 87 meters to the target. And they turn to dashes when it can't detect anything. There's only three numbers here. So the maximum is 999 meters and then it will stop reporting. The arrow buttons on the right hand side zoom you in and out. And then the number to the far right is the amount of ammo. If you press number one, a little P will appear, and that is precision mode. It basically just slows the turret down, so if you're zoomed in a lot, it can be helpful to get on target a lot easier. And then the red button down on the bottom right is infrared mode. So right now I've left the turret in kind of a, an odd position looking over to the left here. If you turn the key off, it'll reset and come back to its default position. And then when you turn it back on, the zoom and the orientation is reset. The precision mode doesn't automatically turn off, so you'll need to toggle that yourself. And up here on the left, the D view is the driver's view. So that's just using the Ford camera that the driver also has. Moving into the driver's seat, on the right hand side is the key and this turns on all your displays. It turns on all the backlights as well. So we'll start over here on the left. We've got a touchscreen radio. This flip switch needs to be turned on for the radio antennas to send and receive information. And then this manual antenna fold, you see they're pointing directly up right now. This angles them back. They also angle back once you're going over 30 kilometers. Pressing this little speaker button here will mute the sound coming out of the speaker. And then these bars are the signal strength of your receiving. This top number here, these arrows will let you go up and down between the frequency that you want to transmit on. So the top number is sending and the bottom number is receiving. Next to that, we've got a reversing camera. To get into reverse, you press number one and you can hear the beeping sound and the lights also go white on the back. If I reverse up to this building, you can see the lines are white at the moment. And as I get closer, they turn yellow and then they turn red. Red is about the distance where you can still open the door, not hit anything and get out. Below the reversing camera, we've got illumination flares and then the remaining flares.
are slightly angled so they don't go directly up. They'll end up a little bit to your left and a little bit to your right. The button below the illumination flare count is the track switch for the trains. And then to the left of that, the internal water level. This is the same gauge that's back here that shows you how much water is inside. So you might need to use the bilge pump. Behind this little wedged wall, there is an automatic bilge pump that will start to drain out. So that'll give you some idea of how much water is actually in here, but it'll automatically do it. Up in the top left here, we've got the engine RPS, engine temperature, fuel level, and the battery level. Below that, two little indicators for your headlights and your parking brake. And then we've got the interior light toggle. So that goes between white, red, and off. The bilge acknowledge will stop the bilge alarm from going off. So I'll drive into the water. So if you're in the water and the door opens, you'll start taking on some water. So you can see there's 930 litres of water in here, but it's going down automatically. So we know that there's water inside, it's not much and it's leaving. If you press the bilge acknowledge, it just stops that alarm. It's going to keep pumping the water out, but it's just letting you turn the alarm off. Below that we've got a rear door button and a rear door open. So as the driver you can tell when your door is open without having to get out of your seat and look. The indicators and switches next to it are rear wheel steering. The front two wheels steer at the same rate the entire way through and they slow down as your speed increases. Your turning rate decreases as your speed increases. The rear wheels will also decrease as your speed increases but their turning rate is just limited, it's divided by two. Next to that, transponder locator. The indicator light doesn't turn on because this pulses and you'll also hear a sound when you're picking up the transponder pulse. So you need to look at the flip switch to see that it's on. In the middle we've got the driver's display. And up in the top right, the speed, current speed. The maximum speed in water is about 50 kilometers. And the maximum speed on land is about 160. In the bottom middle here we've got the weather readout, so the current temperature, the current rain percentage and the current fog percentage, and then the wind direction and the wind speed. At the top we've got the don't get lost unit, so compass heading and cardinal direction, the time and the GPS coordinates. On the far right hand side we've got the amphibious mode touch panel. If you're in water mode only the propellers will work. This is good if you're in heavy waves and you're jumping out of the waves a lot. The automatic mode won't try and switch you to land mode if you get too high out of the water. It'll just keep the propellers going. And the same goes with land mode. If you're on land and you go through some water but you don't want to engage, you can just specify which mode you want to be in. The automatic mode works most of the time but it's good for transitioning. There's a liquid sensor on the bottom here, and that is detecting how high you are above water level. So being that the ARV sits quite low in the water, it's detecting lower than zero, you must be in the water, and higher than zero, you're out of the water. I would recommend that you use auto mode just when you're transitioning between water and land, and then flip to one of the permanent modes once you have made it to water or land. I'm in water mode, approaching the land here, As I get closer, I'm going to swap over to auto mode. And once we're on land, I'm going to swap to land mode. So that just means you're not going to have any weird stuff happening. When you're in land mode, the propellers will stop spinning. They're on a generator, so they're effectively braked. This will help prevent you from getting chopped up in the propellers when you get out. Below the amphibious mode panel, there is CC plus, CC minus, CC toggle, and a throttle. So if I put on the handbrake, when you press W, your throttle goes up. When you press S, your throttle goes down quicker, but it also applies to brakes. If you throttle up with W and then let go, it'll slowly decrease at the same rate it went up. So you can 
speed up its decrease by holding S so you can brake faster. If you're driving and you've found a nice throttle position for a suitable speed for what you're doing, you can press the CC toggle button and that'll lock the throttle at that position. Pressing number two on your keyboard is the same button as the CC toggle. CC up and CC down let you change the throttle position without having to disengage the cruise control. The up and down arrows also control this throttle when you're in cruise control mode. So for me, I use that because I play in third person a lot. So I can control my cruise control, I can brake, I can turn, I can drive completely without ever having to go into first person. Pressing the spacebar on the driver's seat is the horn. And pressing number three on your keyboard turns the driver out. Having all the cruise controls as up and down arrows and two means that you can drive from turned out position as well. And down here, just beside the driver and the gunner seat, is two pistols and two pistol ammos. When you're in water mode, when you turn, you do lean quite a lot. This was unintentional, but it turned out to be very useful. The ARV isn't self-writing, but if you get caught up in a wave, you can use the fins and the fact that it leans very heavily into its turns to flip it over. One thing to note is that the air intake is this little fluid port here directly beside the driver's turnout hatch. Because it's a modular engine, the air manifold will delete the water that gets in there, so you don't have to worry too much about submerging it, and there is a small air supply in the air manifold anyway. If you find yourself caught up in a tsunami, or some rough weather, the best thing to do can sometimes be to stop. Right now I'm upside down, but if I turn hard, I can influence the way that it's spinning, or that it's rolling. As long as you can get the propellers into the water, then you should be able to influence which way is up and which way is down, and roll yourself back upright. I wouldn't recommend using the ARV as a long range ocean going vehicle, because it uses these small fins on the bottom for steering in the water it's very susceptible to being pushed around by the wind. So if you find yourself out in a very high winds, high wave ocean, it's going to be a little bit tricky to control. It works best when you're just transitioning between rivers and land. I think I've covered everything. If I've missed something or you're a bit confused, leave a comment, let me know and I'll try and help you out.